this, my friends, is a life hack that will stand you instead for the rest of your life. Okay, what am I talking about? I am talking about being uncomfortable. So being comfortable with being uncomfortable. What do I mean? I believe that comfort is easy. But easy life, easy things, hard life. And that's the problem. Being comfortable is very, very easy. So what we need to be is we need to be uncomfortable. Why? Because when you're uncomfortable, that's when you grow. That's when the magic happens. That's when all the self the beliefs and are knocked down and we can better ourselves. We can really, really improve. And guess what? You've got some kick-ass stories to tell you. It makes you more interesting. If we just lived in our comfort zone all the time, we would never, ever do anything. Imagine... Can you remember when you've been uncomfortable? And after you've been uncomfortable, you feel that sense of pride. You feel so proud of yourself. You're walking 10 foot tall. You've got so much more confidence. And that, my friends, is so, so important. That is how we develop. I'll tell you a quick story about, about me. Um, I was asked to speak in Vegas. All of a sudden, I got this message saying, do you want to speak in Vegas? It's all stories. I'm like, this is awesome. Hell no. Put it down thinking, as if I'm going to speak in Vegas, don't be stupid. Anyway. Um, I thought, well, no, wait a second. I need to be uncomfortable. I need to be in that uncomfortable zone. And so what happened? I spoke in Vegas. Now, I don't want to tell you that it was, it was, I wasn't nervous. I wasn't worried. I was shaking and not just immediately before it, for two months before it, it ruined my life. It took off my life, but it was the best thing I ever did. The speech went really, really well. It was amazing. I then got asked to speak at the European Self Storage Conference in London with 800 people there. And I was even more nervous. But it went really, really well again. And so it was it was a really, really good thing for me. And now I've done that. Now I've done that. I never have to do it again. <laughs> but I've, I've done it. It's on my resume. Everyone can see it. And I feel so proud of myself. I've been asked to do other speaking gigs, done them as well. And don't get me wrong, I hate it. I don't enjoy I, I like being up there, but I don't like the feeling up to it. However, now it's elevated me in the industry as to somebody who knows what they're talking about and understands the industry. And that, that gives me... Uh, higher value for when I'm going for lending, when I'm borrowing money as well. Um, but I also want to tell you that just because you feel uncomfortable, it doesn't mean it's going to go right. I'll give you one example, and I'm still here, and I can laugh about it now. I got asked to speak when I was a betting guy at a conference in the Etihad Stadium. And I was like, not Etihad Stadium, sorry, Emirates Stadium. I was like, yeah, boy, let's do it. Anyway, there was like 2,000 people online, live online. There's camera going like this to me when I was on stage. And there was all these people in front of me. Um, there was... There was people. There was a. There was famous people in the racing industry, and then there was little old me. And I had a podcast of like seventy thousand downloads a month, and so it was all right. It was like a million downloads a year. However, these people were on television. These people have been doing it for years and years and years, and they all congregated next to each other, and they all spoke to each other and had pizzas together. And the the people who was putting the event on, we was upstairs, and the rest of the people were downstairs, and the people who were putting the events on, um, bought everybody a pizza. But they didn't buy me a pizza. They bought everyone else a pizza. And so I felt left out. And then I was on my own because I didn't want to go over there because they didn't know who I was. I was like, who is this guy? What, what's he speaking here for? Anyway, I got on stage. And after five minutes being on stage, I got a little tap on my shoulder. This is the worst experience, by the way, that any speaker can have. Um, your time's up now, mate. I said, I've still got 15 minutes speaking to go. Yeah, but it, we're running behind. It's over. <laughs> so I, got, I got dragged off. I was like, oh, my God. And then obviously... Uh, with that kind of following 70,000 in the betting industry, you're going to have some haters. You're going to have people who hate. And I got so much stick for it on Twitter, honestly. And it was horrible. I can't lie. It was horrible. However, I've got an interesting story. I'm more interested now because I can tell that story. I laugh about it now. I think it's funny. I think it's amazing. Now, would I change it? No, absolutely not. Because it's made me more confident. Because I think if that's the worst thing that can ever happen, you're public speaking, nervous as hell. Nobody knows you really. And bet fair, get you to speak there. And I got paid 500 quid, like. And and then you get dragged off. I, get, I actually got dragged off. It's the worst thing that ever can happen to me. Uh, not the worst thing that ever can happen to you, but it's one of those... It's like your nightmares come true. But then you realize, do you know what? If that's the worst thing that can happen, bring it fucking on, baby, because I can handle that. I can handle that. And if, if that's what I'm scared of, that's not much. How ridiculous being dragged off a stage because you're shit speaking. <laughs> oh, God, it's still embarrassing now. But that's the worst that can happen. So go out and make yourself uncomfortable because I promise you, whatever you think is the worst thing that can happen, one, it will probably never, ever, 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 ever even close to happening. And number two, even if it does, it's not that fucking bad. All right, my friends, I love you. I appreciate you, and I'll see you tomorrow.